Today I'm gonna show you how to design shirts like Root. They are a streetwear brand mainly famous for their shorts. At least that's how I discovered them in the first place. But they do have some iconic tee designs as well. Especially this retro leopard shirt design. Which is the design that I'll be recreating today. Let's go. Yo guys, what is good? Stixon, your boy from Intuitive Designs. Now, before I begin, I just want to plug my store real quick. I got tons of free assets available there, just like this lighting PNGs. So if you're new to the channel, get them all now. Link in the description below. In return, drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videos. Right, so in Photoshop, this is the layout we're gonna be working with today. It's in A2, specifically 4961 by 7016 pixels at 300 dpi. And these are the main colors we're gonna use later on. I'm gonna put the hex code on screen, so just copy them before we continue. Now I'm just gonna drag this up top so it doesn't get in the way. So I did some research and found out that the font they use for this design is actually Times New Roman. It's a very basic font but I guess if it works, it works right. Um, the designer did make them slightly bolder but we're not gonna do that since I figured people are more interested with the effects anyway. So we're gonna focus more on that. Now back in a working file, I'm going to select the type tool by hitting T on your keyboard, uh, this one right here, and then make sure the font selected is Times New Roman, and then the size is 200, at least for now. And then I'm going to click on the color picker here, and in the hex code bar, put in 80, 80, 80 to get that true gray color. And then just click on the file and type root. And then command T on your keyboard to scale it up like so. Next, we're going to group this type layer by hitting on command G. And then we're going to rename the group to effects. So the first effect we're going to add to the type layer is the bevel and emboss. So go ahead and apply that. Let me reset it to default and show you guys the step by step. Now zoom in a bit so that you guys can see better. So we're gonna keep the first two settings as is, but bump the depth to 1000 and then set the size to 15. Change the angle to 120. Change the glass contour to ring, which is this one right here. And then set both the opacity of highlight and shadow to 25%. Next, go to contour, drop the range all the way to zero to get that solid sharp look instead of the soft curve when the, um, when the range is in 100. This way it looks more rigid and retro in a way when we add the colors and effects later on. Next, we're going to add a gradient to the font, so create a new layer by clicking on this button and then make sure that it is outside of the group layer like this and then select the gradient tool which is this one and then just drag it over to the middle like this just about the height of the font and then we're going to clip it to the group layer by holding on to the option key on your keyboard and then hover the mouse between these two layers and you'll see this icon pops up just click on it and it'll clip it to the layer below because we only want to create an effect to apply to the font only next set the blending mode to overlay drop the opacity to 50 and then rename it to gradient now here comes the final step is adding a gradient map layer so just go to this button and then select gradient map this is the effect that will add colors to the font we'll be extracting these colors in a bit and then just clip the layer like before to the one below then in the properties tab hit on this gradient and here we go now just drag the black end to the middle somewhere around 50 i mean 46 percent in the location 
after that the white end to about 47 to get that sharp line and then change the white color to this off-white one that we have pre-selected after that create a new point by clicking it like this then i'm going to set the color to this mustard yellow create another one here and then set the color to this blue you can see that the effects are coming to life you can start experimenting now by creating um, new points along the spectrum and then um, you know setting the color to off-white and then basically just play with the placement until you are happy with the look now if we go back to reference design you can see some highlighted area um, around the edges inside of the text so we're gonna do that next by selecting the group layer not the font layer it's the group layer and then we're gonna add a bevel and emboss effect reset it to default uh, let's drop the size to 16 soften to 2 untick the global light and then set the altitude to 80 select the glass contour and then drag um, the bottom end point all the way up and then set the right one to just 98 percent for its output and set the highlight mode to linear dodge after that bump the opacity to 100 percent finally go to contour select the contour and then drop the bottom end point all the way to the right around 98 percent after that drop the range to zero now you can see that the effect has been added to the font you can change the depth if you want to make it bolder so that it's more visible that is basically how the effect is done to the text guys you can play with the angle to fine tune it to look exactly like the reference design as you can see that it shifts depending on the angle and altitude but for this tutorial i'm just going to leave it here Final step is adding the stars to the design. So go to the polygon tool, this one here. Make sure that the sides are set in number four. And then in the settings, take unconstrained um, star ratio to 1%. Take smooth star indent. After that, set the color to off white and then just drag it like so. Now the star still looks pretty thick. So we're gonna fix that by using the warp effect set it to inflate just drag it all the way down like this there's probably a better way to do this guys so if you know please comment below i'm always happy to learn there we go now the final step is just rotating it to 45 degree and then just copy and paste them around the design i'm just gonna put it here where the highlighted areas are now you might wonder that the effects still look very raw it's got some pixelated areas here and there uh, all that will be fixed by the end, so don't worry. Now let's group the stars into one. Group it one time so that all the text effect layers are in one place. Now we can move on to the main graphic. So here's the leopard stock image that I will be using today. But before that, if you look at the original design, they are using a vintage illustration of a leopard. Uh, almost looks like it's taken from a comic book but i could be wrong of course but it is definitely not a stock photo i couldn't find one without causing copyright issues so i'm gonna use a stock photo and then just try to replicate that vintage look you can go to unsplash or pexels for free stock photo guys never use google anyway just crop it from the background which i've already done it so i'm just gonna drag it to a working file Let's rename it to Panther or Leopard. I'm not sure which one is the correct terminology, but anyway, convert it to smart object, scale it up to about the size of the text, and then just put the layer behind the text layer. Now we will do the overlapping effect, which is done by using just mass layer. It's very, very simple. Um, select the text group layer, add a mass layer, and then holding on to the command key on your keyboard and select the panther layer to bring up the selection and then using the hard round brush tool just brush it out like this i'm gonna brush out this tail because it doesn't really end well so it looks kind of weird so let's get rid of that now the contrast of the image looks pale we're gonna fix that by using the levels adjustment tool so I'm going to set the left point to 20 and then the right point to 180 so that the composition looks way more sharper. 
Now your image may require different inputs, so just adjust them accordingly. Just make sure that the composition looks dramatic like this. Okay, now we're gonna work on the colors and create that dual tone look. So one side of it is in blue and the other one is orange. First create a new layer and then clip it to the panther layer. Set the blending mode to overlay. Now select the soft round brush tool, but drop the flow to 50% and then just brush it like this. Only on the right side of the panther now imagine like there's two light sources pointing at the panther one side blue and the other orange now the left side of the ear is blue just brush the rest of the body in blue as well uh, maybe add a tinge of orange here and there especially on the back area now for the eyes we're going to select the yellow and then just go by like so we're almost done now guys but as you can see the blue color looks too vibrant we don't want that we want it to have that washed out um, shade like the one in the tag so we're gonna fix that by going to image adjustments and selective color now i'm gonna set the color to cyan and then just play around the settings until we get that vintage shade this happens when you set the blending mode to overlay it tends to blow up the vibrancy of your colors so fine tune it this way is a great way to achieve the exact shade that you need now the reds i'm pretty happy with this so far so let's move on final step is adding filters to the panther to create that comic illustrator look of course it won't look as real but i'm gonna try that anyway so just go to filter filter gallery i'm gonna start out with dry brush filter under the artistic folder set it to zero to one and then add a new filter this time i'm going to select grain set the type to clumped for that bigger grain aesthetic and then set the settings to 40 and 50. you can already see it looks painted now but we're not done yet i'm gonna do it one more time but this time i'm gonna add one more filter that is the poster edges so we're gonna set the settings to 212 after that just press ok and then group the panther effects into one group almost almost done now guys we're gonna add another filter to the entire design so that looks more cohesive so we're gonna option command e to merge the layers into one separate layer not command e guys it's option command e okay and then just convert it to smart object go to filter gallery one more time this time though we're only going to use grain now this final step is optional if you like the look of it now then you can skip this part but to truly achieve that vintage look we're going to add a matte effect to the shadows of the design by using the curves tool so just drag the bottom left point to about uh, 24 the output and there we go that is how we recreate that vintage root design Hope you guys learned something new today, guys. If you want more tutorials like this, please comment below. I'll keep making them. Like and subscribe to show some support. See you in the next one.